Hello cheapskaters, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club where our goal is to live life debt free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. June is the beginning of our winter. But it's not our coldest month, although apparently we are experiencing the coldest start to winter in 70 years. Wayne just rolled his eyes when I, when I told him that. And the boys just rolled their eyes when I told them that, you know, when I say, oh, I can't remember it being so cold this early in the year before, I'm not lying. I can't. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not 70. I'm nowhere near 70. But um, where we live, it's cold, which is strange because we are in what is known as a warm zone. So we have a really good growing year. Now, if you're not sure what your zone, your growing zone is, you can easily check on the Diggers Club website, which is the one I use. I'll put the link below. But there are so many. Um, the Gardening Australia website will have the growing zones available for you. There's heaps of them. Um, I like the Diggers one because it has the map. It's easy to follow. It shows the heat zones and the cold zones. And then it has the list of vegetable and flower seeds to plant month by month for each zone. Makes it really easy. Now, starting from seed is a really cheap way to get your garden started, even though seed prices are going up. But I'm sure you all know that anyway. Now, you can, of course, wait and buy seedlings from your nursery if you think starting seeds is hard. But really, it's it's not. Anyway, this month, I thought I'd let you know what I'll be planting. So I'm planting broccoli, um, mini cabbage, mini cauliflower. I'll be planting lettuce, <laughs> peas, more peas, more radishes. I'll do silver beet this month, more mini turnips and spring onions. They're on my list of things to go into the ground this month. And they are all plants that are suitable for planting in my zone in June. Now, I cheat with planting. I'm a bit of a rebel planter, 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 gardener, whatever. And I cheat because I plant the seeds straight into the garden beds. Two reasons. One, I'm lazy. And the second one is it means they don't need to be, stir, um, be disturbed to go from the seedling pot to the soil. Oh, another reason. It means I don't need to harden them off before I plant them out in the garden either. Now, this works for me. It may not work for you, but it works for me. And planting the seeds takes a little longer but I do save time later by not having to transplant seedlings. It takes a little longer because I have to really work the garden beds over and make sure that the soil is really, really well composted and also really, really fine. You've all seen um, seed raising mix and how fine it is. When I plant my seeds, that's what the top six inches or so, 15 centimetres or so of our garden beds looks like. I work really hard to turn it over, get rid of any lumps, make it really fine, pull out the weeds. So it does take me a little longer to plant the seeds, but I'd have to do all that anyway if I was doing seedlings. Anyway, my plan is for June, 12 broccoli, six mini cabbage, six mini collies. I'll do 12 lettuce, another two dozen peas, Two dozen radishes. Radishes are really quick. 28 days from seed to eating them. They're really, really quick. And look, they are great. I know that they don't, um, don't seem as popular here in Australia, but they are really good. They're great. Finely sliced. Um, try finely slicing them, really finely slicing them and putting them on a salad sandwich. 
just adds a little bit of extra crunch, but a little bit of extra peppery flavor burst too. Really, really good. So don't think you don't like radishes. <laughs> Give them a go and see because they are actually really nice and they go so well with hummus, radishes and hummus. So I like to quarter them and then we dip a quarter into the hummus and lunch on a really nice snack. Anyway, I digress. Um, I will count the seeds out and plant just that number and they should, fingers crossed and well watered and soaked if they need to be and into good soil they should all germinate because they're not that old these are all reasonably new seeds and when i say that i mean they're not you know six seven eight years old and of course i'll treat them like the babies they are until the plants are well established now i know it's not the way most backyard gardeners plant their gardens I am um, I don't think I know anyone else that does it my way um, no I don't know anyone else that does it my way but it works for me um, but then I don't know another gardener who feeds their garden every single week every Sunday morning my Sunday morning job is to go around and feed all the garden, including the lavender, all the fruit trees, the rhubarb, the strawberries, the raspberries. I feed them all every week with worm tea or compost tea, whatever I've got. It works for me. It's what Wayne's granny told me to do that. It worked for her, so it's working for me. I'm never going to do it. I'm not going to stop. Now, I also um, stagger the planting. So you notice I had specific numbers, six cabbages, six cauliflowers. So in July, if they're still in the, in the July list, I'll plant another six. And that's so that I have a continuous crop of them. They're not all ready to eat at once. They're not all ready to harvest at once because, you know, it's bad enough in summer having to do all the tomatoes at once and all the cucumbers at once and all the zucchini at once. So I stagger them so that we can get through them. Now I plant the minis and I get this question a lot. I plant the minis because one mini cauliflower or one mini cabbage is enough for two or three meals for my family. And then it's gone out of the fridge. So it doesn't have time to, you know, go black or mildewy or or we don't get sick of it because, you know, a big head of cabbage can take ages to get through. So that's why I plant the minis. Now, I can leave them in the garden and they will grow to almost full size, but I tend to not do that. Um, the other thing I do is things that take a long time to get to the harvest stage, things like capsicums that I'll be planting later in the year, well, the seeds get planted out early because capsicums are slow anyway. They are slow from seedling stage. So from seed to harvest is longer. So I plant those out early too. To get the most from my garden, I use the square foot method of gardening. And I've used this for years and years and years. And I've noticed that it's seeing a bit of a revival on um youtube and that's really good to know if you don't know about it hop on over to our website cheapskates club website i've written a few things a few stories and articles about square foot gardening i love it i've been doing it as long as we since we've been in this house so that's ah, coming up 20 years <laughs> um so and i'll be you know doing the same thing using the square foot method to plant out these seeds now, we don't have a huge backyard. We live in the suburbs and it's more house than yard, which is typical for our suburb. And so we don't have a huge garden either. It just means that getting the most from it is really important to me. And I guess with the way the costs of fruits and vegetables are going up and the shortages we're seeing, 
it's more important than ever. Now, I, I know everyone has seen the $12 lettuce, $12 lettuce. Well, you know what? If lettuce is $12, we're not eating it. It's okay, I've got some in the garden. But I have to say, here in the southern states, lettuce are out of season. So unless you grow your own, then you should expect to pay more. Um, I don't think they'll stay $12. I'm pretty sure the price will come down. Um, most of that price increase is caused simply because the market gardeners in Queensland and North, um, North New South Wales that feed most of the east coast of Australia have been flooded out. They've been rained out. They, their paddocks are soaked and their, their crops are underwater. So once they're able to get back in and, and replant and they grow again, the price should come down. It'll still be up a little bit because transport costs will be up, but it won't be that bad. My heart breaks for them because the rain and flooding has done such a lot of damage to our food supply, but to their income. You know, they're really going to be struggling. Anyway, back to, back to um, seeds and planting. Once they're planted, I give them a worm tea drink and then I cover them with little hoop tunnels. Now, these little hoop tunnels are just like big ones, only minis. They, um, they help to keep the bugs off the seedlings as they pop up. They act like, you know, keep them warm in our winter weather, which is why I can grow lettuce all year round and why I often have tomatoes in July. Um, they're really, really good. Nothing fancy, folks. Now, we bought our first one years ago years and years and years ago and it was about 14 or 50 15 dollars it wasn't very much and i was telling wendy about them um, from my abundant life a couple of weeks ago and then i went on the hunt for them because i thought oh i wonder if they're still available yes they are still available from bunnings and this is what it looks like i brought one in from outside to show you so i don't know if this is going to work or not can you see let me see can you see it there it is i'll get the thing out and you can see it and that's what it comes like in the in the bag straight from the there it is see it's just like a look going the wrong way I keep forgetting i've got to reverse everything there you go that's what it looks like it's about 18 inches 18 inches or so high um, the one I got was three metres long because that will fit over two beds. Really easy to put together, but I really like them because they have a zip in the top. So once you put the wires in to make the hoops and put them in your garden, you don't have to rip them out to get to the plants. There's a zip across the top, so you just unzip it and you can sprinkle in your worm tea or your compost tea or pull out the weeds, check that the babies are, are doing what babies are supposed to be doing and growing. Um, they have really, really handy. Now, they still have them at Bunnings. You might be able to get them somewhere else. I haven't looked. And they're $17 for that size. And they do come in different sizes. But I, um, I just love them because they're reusable too. When they're no longer needed in the garden, all I do is pull them out and take the hoops out, take the wires out and lie it on the grass, hose it off. And when it's dry, I just fold it up and put them back into the bag. And then they go um, actually under the veranda, ready for the next season. Really easy. Um, like I said, we've had um, our first one we've had for years. And as soon as I get this next lot of seeds in the ground, this one will be going over that bed to get them started. Um, and then I think I'm going to be thinking about what needs to be planted in July because um, planting the garden and staggering the plantings means that our garden produces all year round and it feeds us and saves us a lot of money, especially now. But it means we need to plan constantly so that we can stagger the plantings and have food to eat all year round. And I have to say that 
if we grow our own, even if it's just a few things, we get a much better variety of fresh produce than we can buy at the supermarket or the green grocer and certainly better than we could afford to buy. So growing just makes sense to me. And you know, garden time is my happy space. I like garden time. If you think you can't um, grow anything, especially in winter, think again, you can. It's easy enough to do. Check your growing zone, check your seeds, and just get planting. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked our show, give us a thumbs up. If you know someone who might like this show or who might like to know about the Cheapskates Club, please use the share button. It just sends them a link. We don't harass them with anything else. And if you are not subscribed to our channel, please click that subscribe button, then hit the bell and you'll be notified every time I upload a video or we go live. Have a great day, everyone, and I hope I see you all in the forum sharing your cheapskating gardening experiences very, very soon.